We talk a lot on this channel about all of the results we drive for our clients using Facebook ads. But one common problem that we hear a lot is that it's either confusing, daunting, or both to try to read Facebook Ads Manager. The question we get asked often is how do you analyze your Facebook ad results? So that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do in this video. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Brandy with Life Marketing, the digital marketing agency with a mission to help small businesses grow. Before we get started, please go ahead and like this video for me, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the business growing videos we put out every single week. For today's video, I'm gonna screen share and walk you through Facebook Ads Manager's metrics and we'll look at three major metrics to pay attention to while we're walking through how to analyze your Facebook ad results as a whole. All right, so let's start out by understanding the layout of Facebook Ads Manager metrics. When you're looking at Ads Manager, it breaks down into the campaign level, the ad set level, and the ad level. So you can view all of these columns of metrics for any given level. This is helpful for comparing metrics when you want to see how different campaigns stack up against each other, or if you want to compare how different ad sets, aka audiences are performing, etc. So the columns of metrics you're seeing on my screen are likely the same ones you'll see on yours because they are Facebook's default settings. If you click the drop down here, you can see all the different ways to filter your view of metrics. Some of these metrics overlap between filters, but there are some metrics that are not present on the default setting, but are present on others and vice versa. And beyond that, you can click customize columns to unlock every metric as manager offers. But before we get ahead of ourselves, I want to start by looking at the top three most important metrics cost per result, frequency, and link CTR. So starting with cost per result, this metric will automatically be available to view if you have your filter set to default. What the result is will vary depending on what campaign you're running. If you're running an engagement campaign, it's gonna be your cost per engagement. Traffic campaign, per link click. A conversion campaign will usually be per purchase, but a custom conversion can track just about anything you want. For example, the cost per result for a custom conversion can be cost per thank you page because let's say you're sending people to a landing page and you want to track how many people fill out the lead form and once they complete the lead form it takes them to a thank you page. You can track how many people land on that thank you page to track lead conversions there. Facebook will automatically select what the result is in your cost per result based on the campaign you choose. I've stated in other videos that the campaign you choose optimizes around that goal and this is just further proof of that. But all right so why is the cost per result metric one of my top three important metrics to focus on. The reason is because if you're happy with that number, the rest of the metrics won't matter so much. Oftentimes, if your campaign isn't performing well, meaning you're spending a lot of money on it and not making much or anything back, we'll start troubleshooting things like, okay, what's your frequency? What are your quality ranking scores, etc. But ultimately, even if your quality ranking score is low, for example, I wouldn't go out of my way to fix that if you're still getting really good results at an affordable, profitable cost. Because it doesn't matter if you're getting results, what matters is if you're getting results at a sustainable level. All right, so the second important metric to look at is frequency. But before we get into that, here is a quick message from Sherman. Hey, we just helped a small business make over $1.5 million through Facebook advertising. And after managing millions of dollars in ad spend for thousands of different small businesses, we have decided to give away everything we learned to you in a special program. If you wanna learn the blueprint to success, the best practices from some of the fastest growing companies in the world, and all of the different tools you will need, then sign up for our social ads training program today. I'll put a link for that in the description, but back to the second important metric. Even if your cost per result is healthy, frequency is still something to keep your eye on and I'll show you why in a second. But to get to frequency, I'm gonna change my column metrics to delivery and then we'll see the frequency metric. Facebook says it's the average number of times each person saw your ad. So if your frequency is higher than one, it means the same people are seeing your ad multiple times. Having a high frequency can either be a good thing or a bad thing depending on your ad performance. So if your cost per result is healthy and profitable, but your frequency is eight, does that mean you should change everything to get your frequency lower? Not necessarily. Don't fix what's not broken, you know what I mean? In changing your ads and or audiences to lower your frequency, you run the risk of ruining what is working about your current ad and audience combination that are driving the good results you've been getting. 
The same people seeing your ad eight times isn't bad if you're still generating great results at a profitable cost. At the same time, the same people seeing your ad eight times is bad if you're not generating great results at a profitable cost. That's why we often look at frequency as a quick troubleshooting metric if your ads aren't performing well because it's a quick fix. But what I would advise if your frequency is high but you're happy with your cost per result is to leave things as they are for now, but to go ahead and have some back backup audiences and ads ready to test out in the event that your results do start slowing down. If your budget is big enough, I'd more so suggest already having those audiences and ads running in another ad set and an A-B split test. But essentially, if you have a good thing going with your Facebook campaigns, you don't want to change it solely to fix a metric that isn't as important as the one directly related to your profit like cost per result. Now, before we move on, it's important to note that everything we've talked about with frequency so far is in the event of cold audiences, which are people who have never heard of your brand or business before. You should expect your frequency to be higher for warmer audiences, like a retargeting audience. These are people who have heard of your brand before, such as your website traffic, your Facebook post engagement, etc., and you're intentionally showing ads to them again to get them to convert. You should see a higher frequency on those campaigns because that's the point of them. All right, and moving on to the third important metric, link CTR. If your cost per result is too high and your frequency is low, so you know that's not the issue, we usually look at link CTR next. So I'm gonna go back to columns and change my view to performance and clicks, and you can see it's showing link clicks, cost per link click, and link CTR, which means link click-through rate. I keep specifying link clicks and not just clicks because some metrics will measure all clicks, which includes likes on the ads and comments, etc. And in this instance, we specifically want to see out of all the people who have seen the ad, how many people are actually clicking to the website. So your link CTR is the percentage of times people saw your ad and performed a link click. Now your link CTR will vary depending on your business, industry, and target audience, but let me show you how to think about these metrics in general. If your cost per result is really high or non-existent because you're not getting any sales and you check your frequency and it's low, then you look at your CTR. If your CTR is low or your link clicks are low, then that means there's either something wrong with the ad itself or the target audience you're delivering it to. Meaning either your ad isn't captivating enough or addressing the right pain points or goals of your target audience, or it is, but you're showing it to the wrong audience. Now, if you are getting a lot of link clicks, but you're not getting conversions, that means your ad is doing its job. It's getting people's attention and getting them to click to your site, but then something on your site is deterring them from purchasing. Here are a couple of things that could be going wrong there. Number one, your ad and your website or whatever landing page you're sending traffic to are not congruent meaning the offer, branding, and verbiage they see on the ad is not the same as what they're seeing on the website the ad sends them to. Number two, your website is bad. Now I know that's blunt and subjective, but here are a few examples of what I mean. It's poorly designed, it's not practical, or in some cases, fully functional. It doesn't give people a clear CTA of what to do or where to go, or maybe the loading time is so slow, people exit before it's even loaded all the way which happens a lot. If you're an e-commerce store owner, you can take this a step further by looking at your add to cart metric. If you're seeing a high CTR and lots of add to carts, but not many conversions, the problem is probably in your checkout process. Either something is not working correctly or quickly there, or maybe you've got some high shipping costs or long delivery times that are deterring people from actually clicking purchase. I feel like I could make a whole separate video on how to troubleshoot your website. So comment yes to the website video if that's something that you'd wanna see from us. But the last thing that could possibly be the issue here is not necessarily with your website itself, but with a lack of retargeting. Only 2% of website visitors actually convert on the first visit to your site. So if you're not putting your ad in front of these people again, you're likely to lose up to 98% of visitors who have abandoned your site. That's why you see statistics like this one that says with retargeting, you can attract up to 98% of visitors who have abandoned your site. And once you do retarget them and get them back to your site, website visitors who are retargeted are more likely to convert by 43%. So if you've looked at your frequency, your link CTR, 
and your website and you're still not finding the issue as to where you're losing customers, you may need to look at your retargeting efforts to see if that starts closing some more sales for you. All right, so at this point in the video, hopefully you've learned a few things, but you may be thinking, those are just three metrics out of a bajillion in Ads Manager. What about the rest of them? And you're right, there are a ton. So let's look at four more common metrics you will see and actually use in Ads Manager. Let's start with CPM, which is your cost per 1,000 impressions. You can find this under the delivery column filter along with the cost per 1,000 people reached. So remember the difference between reach and impressions is reach is individual people and impressions are just the number of times your ad was seen. So if I saw your ad five times, your reach would be one and your impressions would be five. People like to look at their CPM because for a lot of the Facebook campaign objectives, you are charged by impressions. So as you go down your list of things to troubleshoot to figure out why your ads aren't performing well, you might find yourself going back to the basics with your impressions because this will tell you if your ad is delivering at an expensive cost to begin with. There are a few things that can affect your CPM, so let's go through some of them really quickly. Number one, if you're targeting a really popular audience, it can raise your CPM. Birthdays are a great example of this. So many businesses love to target people by their birthday month because you can deliver ads that say, here's a free birthday sample on us. Just fill out your name and email to receive it or what have you. And when everybody is targeting the same audience, it becomes an expensive audience because you're all bidding on the same people. Number two, if you saw my video on quality ranking scores, then you know that Facebook basically rates your ads based on how people respond to them. If people are hiding your ads a lot or disliking them, Facebook will recognize that and kind of punish you for it. It will take more money from you than it did before to continue delivering ads to the same number of people at the same rate. So if your CPM is high, try testing out some new audiences and new ads. All right, another common metric to look at is your ROAS, which is return on ad spend. Now, this is more specific to conversion campaigns and businesses that are selling online products. You'll need to go to Customize Columns and type in ROAS and select that option and click the blue apply button to see this metric in your campaigns. This is the total return on ad spend from purchases. This is based on information received from one or more of your connected Facebook business tools and attributed to your ads. So you'll need to have your Facebook tracking pixel set up correctly. You'll be able to see how much you made in revenue from the purchases that originated from your Facebook ads. This is another metric that helps you see whether the results you're receiving are profitable or not. Facebook automatically calculates this number for you, but to help you understand better, it's the revenue generated from your ads divided by your total ad spend. So it's a multiple. If your ROAS is 10, that means you're getting $10 back for every $1 you invest in ads or 10 times your investment. I wanted to give you the formula because it's important to remember that Facebook is calculating this based on your ad spend on that one campaign. It's not taking into account the money spent in labor on your marketing employee or for the graphic design you paid to make the ads, etc. So if you want to get an even more accurate idea of your ROAS, you now have that formula in your toolbox. But in addition to your cost per result, which was one of the most important metrics we discussed at the beginning of the video, your ROAS is just another indicator to confirm if your ads are still leaving you profitable or are you losing money on acquiring these purchases? All right, the last two metrics I wanna look at with you are part of the breakdown feature in Ads Manager. So for the first one, I wanna look at placement. You'll come over here and click the three dots, then click by delivery, then placement. This will break down your campaigns by platform and placement, giving you a clear look into which placements are delivering the most results for you at the lowest cost. So if you can see that all of your results are coming from Facebook feeds and none from Instagram stories, you might consider removing the stories placement to save yourself wasted ad spend. And the same thing goes for the last metric we're gonna look at, country. Again, you'll click the three dots, then click by delivery, then country. Now we're only running ads in the US, but if you're running ads in multiple countries, the same principle applies here where you can determine which country is driving the most results and which is driving the least and make informed decisions from there. And as you saw on my screen, there are tons of different breakdown options to choose from. Placement and country are just the two most relevant that I usually see for our clients, but you can break your campaigns down by any metric that is relevant to you to allocate your budget appropriately.
All right, so total, we've looked at seven metrics today, the three most important, and then four more common helpful metrics. That's still only seven out of, what did we say, a bajillion, right? The thing is you don't wanna get overwhelmed by all the metrics there are to look at, and you also don't wanna get caught up focusing on metrics that don't really matter as much. So I would advise you start with these seven, and then if there is still a metric you feel like you need to look into, you can always go back to customize columns and type it into the search bar to see if Facebook offers it. Once you kind of get in a rhythm with the main metrics you want to compare every day, you can also click the columns drop down and click set as default to create your own custom default settings of the metrics you want to always see when you log in the ads manager. Is there a metric you were hoping I would go over today that I didn't? If so, let me know down in the comments so I can help you out with it. Otherwise, the last thing I want to leave you with is this. Ultimately, analyzing your Facebook ad results should be geared towards lowering your cost per result and maximizing your ROA. So when you start to feel lost or again overwhelmed by all of the analytics inside Facebook Ads Manager, just start looking at your campaigns in the form of yes-no questions. Like, is my cost per result too high? Yes or no? If yes, then ask yourself if the frequency is too high, and so on until you find the issue. Breaking it down like that is not only effective, but also helpful for small business owners trying to make sense of Facebook ad results. All right, that's all I have for you today, guys. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and I will see you in the next episode.